Hello, my name is Al Benzing, and I'm here to introduce another B24 webinar. And this one is unique in that it is talking directly about a B24 from the 8th Air Force that should have been very famous. Instead, uh, her story was suppressed for many years. She's very interesting because it was the first bomber in the 8th Air Force to have completed 25 missions. Um, we're using these webinars, and this is the third out of four B24 webinars, uh, to help us in our fundraising efforts because our B24 Diamond Lil is much in need of your support. She has a landing gear problem that's gonna require us to manufacture some parts. They're gonna cost us around $50,000, and uh, we are making every effort to have those parts ordered by the end of the year so that this aircraft can be flying for her 80th birthday in May of 2021. We are doing our fundraising through two venues here for the uh, B-24. One is called Books for Bombers, and we have Before the Bell and Ted's Traveling Circus, both wonderful books, and uh, Reign of Fire by Charles Phillips, which is a B-29-centric book, uh, which is also a fabulous book. And you can click to donate from our website, which is cafb29b24.org. Um, we also have some Diamond Lil Insignia sneakers or kicks, as we call them, uh, camel colored, uh, the flag, Diamond Lil on them, and uh, they're available for a donation as well. So we hope you'll help support us in that effort. The Before the Bell uh, book was introduced with our last webinar so that you would have the opportunity, for those of you who ordered early, to get an idea of what this webinar is about and what this story is about. And the book came about because of presentations that Jim Lux did on this subject. So it's very fascinating. Uh, a bit more here about the books themselves. Ted's Traveling Circus uh, is really a wonderful, uh, complete history of the 93rd Bomb Group, all B-24s and Reign of Fire, of course, uh, for the B-29. Jim Lux, fabulous fellow. He has done a tremendous amount of work uh, in his efforts to promote. Uh, he's a wonderful proponent for recognition of hot stuff in our crew and of General Frank Andrews. So he'll tell you more about that in the upcoming webinar here in just a moment. And uh, here's just a little excerpt from it. So we hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll support us in our efforts to keep our B-24 Diamond Lil flying where you may purchase rides or come and visit the aircraft, go on an aircraft tour. Thank you very much for your support. Al, I want to thank you and the B-24, B-29 Squadron for inviting me to participate in your webinar. I put together a two-part PowerPoint presentation about a project I've been working on for over 10 years. It began as an effort to get recognition for a friend and bombardier of a B-24 and his crew. It evolved into much more than that. It's the story of a B-24 Liberator called Hot Stuff and one of America's great military leaders. I'm not a historian, but I am a World War II history buff. I spent five years in the Air Force, most of it in Strategic Air Command, as a bomb nav technician on the B-47 Stratojet. I went to work for Rocketdyne Division of North American Aviation, where I built test equipment and participated in the test firings of components of the F-1 and J-2 engines on the Saturn rocket. I spent 30 years working for IBM in marketing and product development before retiring in 1993. I joined the CAF Centex Wing in San Marcos, Texas in 1991 and organized the CAF Gathering of Memories air shows. Revenue from the air shows was used to restore the P-38 Lightning and P-39 Aracobra and a huge World War II hangar, now home of the Centex Wing. Before I talk about hot stuff, I would like to say a few words about Diamond Lil. 
It is essential to keep it flying as a historic museum representing the 18,500 B-24s and those who built, flew, and maintained them in World War II. I often wondered why the B-24 was always in the shadow of the B-17 Flying Fortress. The B-24 flew faster, carried more bombs, had a longer range, and flew more missions. I found out why from a World War II veteran by the name of Bill Gross. Bill was a radio operator and completed 31 missions on a B-24 called Eager Beaver. He said it was, and I quote, publicity. Boeing had the best PR people in the world who somehow always managed to upstage the B-24 no matter what. When you see a picture of an 8th Air Force plane, it's usually a B-17. I'll be talking more about Bill later. The fate of the B-24 Liberator Hot Stuff and Lieutenant General Frank Maxwell Andrews of Joint Base Andrews fame would affect the conduct of the war in Europe in World War II. I learned about hot stuff from a friend, Jake Jacobson. He told me he had flown 31 missions in a B-24 in Europe, but didn't mention the name of the bomber. He also flew another 15 missions in B-29s over Japan. In fact, he was the master bombardier on the last mission of the war on August 14, 1945. The Japanese surrendered that day, but it wasn't accepted until the following day. I mentioned I organized air shows for the CAF Centex Wing in San Marcos, Texas, and we invited honored guests, mostly World War II veterans. I invited Jake to attend, and he gave me a photo for the air show program and told me I could keep it, and I filed it away. One day he asked me if I would look up the history of his bomb group, the 93rd. He said, I don't think you'll find much. He was wrong about that. I located the 93rd Bomb Group website and learned that the 93rd was the first to fly across the Atlantic to England. One B-24 was lost and never found. The 93rd flew its first mission on October 21, 1942 to Lorient, France, about a month and a half after the first American mission flown by B-17s. After several missions, Three of the four squadrons of the 93rd Bomb Group were sent to North Africa on a 10-day mission that turned into almost three months. But I also found out the first heavy bomber in the 8th Air Force to complete 25 missions was a B-24 Liberator called Hot Stuff. I had always thought the honor belonged to the B-17 Memphis Bell. The name Hot Stuff rang a bell. I pulled the photo of Jake's crew from my file, and sure enough, they were standing in front of Hot Stuff. I called Jake and asked him about it, and he confirmed it was true. As a reward, he and his crew were selected to be the first heavy bomber to fly back to the United States to tour the country and help sell war bonds. But he, the co-pilot, and two other crew members were bumped from the flight to make room for a general and his staff who needed to get back to Washington, D.C. Hot Stuff crashed in Iceland in bad weather, and all on board except one crew member were killed. I asked Jake, and he agreed to a video interview, but unfortunately he fell a few days before the interview was to take place, and he never regained consciousness. It bothered me that the Memphis Belle got all the publicity and Hot Stuff had been forgotten. Movies were made about the Memphis Bell, books written, and residuals are probably still being paid to family members of the Bell's crew, while Hot Stuff and her crew got nothing and were soon forgotten. It was then that I decided to try to get long overdue recognition for Jake and his crew for actually being the first to complete 25 and 31 missions. I began doing research and learned a lot about Hot Stuff and her crew. This photograph was taken on Hot Stuff's third mission, sub-hunting over the Bay of Biscay off the coast of France and Spain. The B-24s were often attacked by the Luftwaffe and would head back to the safety of England, but not this time. Robert Shine Shannon, the pilot of Hot Stuff, was informed that there was a JU-88 below them, and he decided to attack. He dove to gain speed and attacked with 50 caliber nose and top turret guns firing. They knew they hit the fighter bomber, 
but it made it into the clouds and they were unable to confirm if it went down. When word of the attack got back to the squadron, Hot Stuff became known as a P-24. Hot Stuff and the rest of the 330th Bomb Squadron, along with the 328th and the 409th Bomb Squadrons, were sent on a 10-day mission to North Africa in support of the 9th and 12th Air Forces that turned into an almost three-month mission. They were supporting Eisenhower and Montgomery in their effort to run Rommel out of North Africa. They lived under harsh, primitive conditions, having to battle wind, dust, varmints, heat during the day, cold at night, and attacks by the Luftwaffe. They couldn't shower, slept in tents, ate and maintained the aircraft in the dust and blazing sun. There was no privacy. Many slept in the airplanes to avoid the stings of scorpions or getting snake bit. This photograph of the crews who were in North Africa was taken after they returned and was on the cover of the July 26, 1943 issue of Life magazine. Six of Hot Stuff's 10-member crew are circled. Four of them were killed. 88 of the approximate 220 crew members in the photo have been identified. 17 were killed in action and two were missing in action. It's estimated that more than 60 to 70 men in this photograph were either killed in action or missing in action. The 93rd Bomb Group's participation in the Wilhelmshaven mission was filmed. Note that most of the B-24s that participated had completed more than 25 missions. These are a few of the consolidated B-24 Liberator bombers in the 8th Air Force's 93rd Bombardment Group known as Ted's Traveling Circus. Most of these bombers completed 25 missions long before the famed Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, Memphis Bell. 193rd Bomb Group B-24s and crews became missing in action during the course of 396 missions. Total sorties numbered 8,169 during which 19,004 tons of high explosives and incendiaries were delivered. The 93rd's attrition ratio was greater than 25% per mission. The 93rd was credited with 93 Axis kills and 41 probables in aerial combat. The date is March 21st, 1943, and the bombers are being prepared for a mission the next day to Wilhelmshaven, Germany. This will be a joint mission with B-17 and B-24 bombers. The B-24 Hot Stuff will be on its 30th mission while the famed B-17 Memphis Bell will be on its 16th. Hot Stuff Bombardier Jake Jacobson is checking the assembly of the bombs. The 93rd Bombardment Group's home base is at Hardwick Airfield in Hardwick, England.
Hot Stuff was retired after its 31st mission to Rotterdam and as the first heavy bomber in the 8th Air Force to complete 25 and 31 missions was selected to return to the United States to tour the country and help sell war bonds. A week before Hot Stuff was to leave for the United States, Lieutenant General Frank Maxwell Andrews, commander of the European Theater of Operations, visited the 93rd Bomb Group and arranged to fly back to the United States on Hot Stuff. He had met the crew in North Africa and was aware they were recognized as one of the best crews in the 93rd. Colonel Ted Timberlake, commander of the 93rd Bomb Group, would later say Hot Stuff's crew was the best in the 93rd. During my research, I was amazed to learn General Andrews was one of America's great military leaders. I spent five years in the Air Force and had never heard of him. He is considered one of the fathers of the modern Air Force. He was selected over many who outranked him to command the General Headquarters Air Force. He was responsible for organizing and centralizing the GHQ Air Force. It would become the United States Army Air Force when it was combined with the Army Air Corps in 1941 prior to the United States entry into World War II. Andrews was an advocate for the B-17 being developed by Boeing aircraft in 1935. The Army didn't want it because they thought the Air Force should only be used in support of ground troops and the Navy didn't want it because they felt they controlled the sea and the air above it. Andrews understood the need for a strategic bomber, but was ridiculed and often referred to as Four Engine Andy. He was offered the job as commander of the Air Corps if he would give up his support for the B-17. He refused and was reduced in rank from Major General to a Colonel and sent to Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio and assigned as the Air Officer of the 8th Air Corps the same location and job assigned to Billy Mitchell after he was court-martialed. As a result, Mitchell retired, but Andrews did not. It wasn't known until a few days before Hot Stuff was to leave for the United States that General Andrews was bringing five members of his staff and three chaplains with him. Five members of Hot Stuff's crew were bumped from the flight including my friend Bombardier Jake Jacobson and co-pilot John Lentz to make room for them. General Andrews was a pilot and replaced Lentz as co-pilot. Hot Stuff left Bovington Field in England for RAF Prestwick, Scotland to get the latest weather conditions and refuel before continuing on to Reykjavik, Iceland. It was decided a stop at Prestwick was not necessary and they continued on to Iceland. On approach to Iceland, Hot Stuff encountered unexpected poor visibility due to snow squalls, clouds, and rain. Captain Shannon made several low passes over Kaldadarne's RAF airfield, but decided to continue on to land at Meeks Field near Keflavik. Zero visibility prevented him from landing, so he decided to return to Kaldadarne's. But Hot Stuff crashed near the top of 1,100-foot Mount Fagradalsfall. The tail gunner, Sergeant George Eisel, was the sole survivor of the crash. He received only minor injuries, but one of his legs was caught in the tail section and he couldn't get out. The aircraft caught fire and George thought he was going to burn to death or be killed by exploding ammunition. Heavy rain eventually put the fire out and he was rescued approximately 24 hours after the crash. CBS World News brings you the world today, presented Monday through Saturday at this same time. American General Andrews has been killed. The text of a communique announcing the accident said, Lieutenant General Frank Maxwell Andrews, commanding general of the European Theater of the United States Forces, was killed late today in an airplane accident in an isolated locality of Iceland. Full information confirming the accident is not yet available. Those killed on board Hot Stuff included the pilot, Captain Robert Shine Shannon, co-pilot, Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews, who was also the commander of the European Theater of Operations, navigator, Captain James E. Gott, radio operator, Tech Sergeant Kenneth A. Jeffers, 
Crew Chief, Master Sergeant Lloyd C. Weir. Gunner, Staff Sergeant Paul H. McQueen. Civilian, Adna W. Leonard, Methodist Bishop and Chairman of the Corps of Chaplains. Brigadier General Charles H. Barth, General Andrews Chief of Staff. Colonel Morrow Crum, he was a member of General Andrews Staff. Colonel Frank L. Miller, U.S. Army Chaplain, Chief of Chaplains. Major Robert H. Humphrey, U.S. Army Chaplain. Lieutenant Colonel Fred A. Chaplin, U.S. Army. Major Theodore C. Totten, General Andrews Secretary. Captain Joseph T. Johnson, General Andrews Aide. Two memorial services were held in Reykjavik. The first one was held for Captain Joseph Johnson at the Catholic Church of Christ, Landicott. The second memorial service for the other 13 who were killed in the crash was held at the Domi Kircha Lutheran Church next to the Parliament Building in downtown Reykjavik. They were buried in the U.S. military plot in Foskaber Cemetery in Reykjavik on May 8, 1943. In 1947, they were exhumed and returned to the United States. General Andrews is buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. Two weeks after Hot Stuff crashed, the B-17 Memphis Bell completed its 25th mission and took Hot Stuff's place, returning to the United States to tour the country. Hot Stuff was soon forgotten. Andrew's family was told there would be a subdued memorial service for General Andrews and he would be honored after the war. On February 7, 1945, Camp Springs Army Airfield in Maryland would be renamed Andrews Field now Joint Base Andrews. He too, however, was also soon forgotten. There's more to the story of Hot Stuff and General Andrews I've been invited to address in the next B-24 webinar. I made a presentation to the West Pointers of Central Texas in 2014. One of the members approached me after the presentation and said he thought the story of Hot Stuff should be made into a movie. He also said he was a writer and would like to write a book. I agreed and provided him with research material and put him in touch with Bill Gross, the radio operator on the B-24 Eager Beaver. Bill was the best friend of Ken Jeffers, the radio operator killed on board Hot Stuff. He also knew the other crew members and flew most of the same missions with Hot Stuff. He was the technical advisor on Before the Bell. The book is a comprehensive account of Hot Stuff from when the crew picked it up in New Hampshire to details of its final flight and tragic ending in Iceland. Before the Bell was awarded a gold medal from the Military Writers Association of America and received rave reviews on Amazon. The book is a limited edition and Al has them available for sale to help in the fundraising effort to get Diamond Lil back in the air. Scott Stewart, son of Carol Stewart, author of Ted's Traveling Circus, donated copies to Al to help raise funds for Diamond Lil. The book is the most comprehensive account of any bomb group in World War II. It also contains eyewitness accounts in detail of Operation Tidal Wave, the heroic though tragic raid on the Ploesti oil fields in Romania.
A limited number of metal plaques were made honoring Hot Stuff's crew and those who died in the accident. Every plaque contains a small piece of Hot Stuff recovered from the crash site. It's a true collector's item for anyone interested in owning a historic piece of World War II memorabilia. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to telling the rest of the Hot Stuff story in the next B24 webinar.